what's going on vinyl community welcome to another video with the record spinner in today's video i am going to be talking about the Jimi hendrix vinyl reissues now i would not go as far as to say i am a diehard hendrix fan of course i dig the music and his musicianship but i personally enjoy buying hendrix vinyl products because it's all down to the presentation in terms of the artwork the quality of the audio and the way it is handled and you'll see why by the end of this video but before we get into the vinyl, let's talk about the catalog. So the posthumous Hendrix catalog is rather controversial due to producer Alan Douglas's authority over the catalog and the replacement of bass and drum tracks with session players alongside the addition of background vocals. Albums like Crash Landing, Midnight Lightning, and Voodoo Soup contain that. And it all came to a head in 1993 when a multi-million dollar deal with MCA was delayed due to Al Hendrix's, uh, who was Jimmy's father, uh, disappointment over the arrangement of the deal. And it had eventually settled to where he had retained the rights to his son's catalog and MCA could license the catalog through a company that Al had formed called Experience Hendrix LLC, which was run by uh, Janie Hendrix, who was the CEO, and John McDermott, who was the catalog director. And this was alongside newly released uh, posthumous recordings and a subsidiary label called Dagger Records, which caters to bootleg quality releases. In 2009, it was announced that a new license deal was struck with Sony Legacy, which would coincide with the Jimi Hendrix catalog project, uh, bringing forth unreleased studio and live material alongside reissues of the classic catalog on CD and vinyl in its first widespread reissue campaign. So of course, they went ahead and reissued the classic studio albums from the Jimi Hendrix experience. Are you experienced? Axis Bold is Love. And Electric Ladyland. Now with Are You Experienced, there are a few variations. The original UK and US versions with different artwork and track listing. And what is really cool is that you can kind of get the best of both worlds depending on your preference. There are two LP editions available. There is the UK album with an extra LP of the non-album singles, which of course kind of correlates with the no singles on albums policy that went on in England back in the day. And the US album with the extra LP of songs left off of the UK release. Um, I would say perhaps go for the US version because you get the more uh, preferred artwork. And I also should say, uh, back in 2010 when these albums got reissued, these are the stereo versions, and then mono versions came uh, in 2013, and I have the uh, mono edition of Axis Bold as Love. I still have yet to get Are You Experienced? And then, of course, they also reissued uh, Band of Gypsies, um, which was an album that was made to resolve a contractual dispute with former manager Ed Chalpin for Capitol Records. So the most common reissue is done by Capitol in the late 2000s. It's not too reputable, also considering Experience Hendrix did endorse it. However, there is a music on vinyl pressing that is endorsed and is done in the same style as the other reissues. Um, the downside is it's only available as an import from the EU, but it is a obtainable from Amazon. It's just not really for as much of an affordable price. Now, there are a bunch of notable posthumous releases that came out uh, from the late 90s, a whole bunch of compilations and live releases, such as Live at Monterey, Winterland, Miami Pop Festival, Atlanta Pop Festival. But I will point out some of the notable ones that have come out since then. Uh, the first one being First Race of the New Rising Sun. Uh, this was an attempt to piece together uh, Hendrix's fourth album that was being worked on at the time of his death. Uh, there were no definitive plans set in stone, but it's kind of based off of the notes that he took and the ideas that he had. Now, most of the songs uh, that appear on this album were first made available on the first couple of posthumous Hendrix albums that came out back in the 70s, such as Cry of Love, Rainbow Bridge, and War Heroes. Now, Cry of Love and Rainbow Bridge were indeed reissued a couple years back, and these are highly reputable reissues. Um, an attempt was made with Voodoo Soup, but obviously that album is avoidable uh, due to Alan Douglas's replacement of the instrumentation. But honestly, these two albums, along with First Rays of the New Rising Sun, are great albums to sit alongside the classic studio albums. 
And then they also did a reissue of Hendrix in the West. Uh, this was a live album that came out back in 1972. Uh, this reissued version uh, includes a couple of extra tracks and alternate cuts since the original Ro uh, Royal Albert Hall tracks from the original album were changed due to um, an ongoing lawsuit at the time. And honestly, I think this is the best Hendrix live release because you get highlights from various shows and various other releases that are on the Experience Hendrix label. So it kind of acts as a good sort of sampler of sorts. And then, of course, there is one of my personal favorites, the big purple Jimi Hendrix Experience box set. This is an 8LP set, comes with a nice book. Um, this is just an absolutely great collection of various alternate takes, mixes, and live material. It's one of the most enjoyable Hendrix releases that I own, and it's also kind of similar to the uh, Beatles anthology by getting a whole bunch of different variations of the classic Hendrix stuff. And then, of course, there is also the trilogy of albums that have been coming out since 2010 when this new deal was struck. In uh, 2010, we got this album, uh, Valleys of Neptune. And then in 2013, we got uh, People, Hell, and Angels. And then just a couple years back, we got this album. This is Both Sides of the Sky. Uh, these are presented as albums which feature um, all unreleased studio recordings worked on uh, during the follow-up to Electric Ladyland. Uh, both never-before-heard songs and various alternate versions of other songs, including some on-doctor material from the Crash Landing and Midnight Lightning albums that I mentioned earlier. Now, let's talk about the source. So, the original studio albums are all analog and mastered by George Marino at Sterling Sound, which is a major up in quality compared to the um, pressings that he did in the 90s, uh, which were actually sourced from digital 9624 files. Um, now, there was most likely digitization when it came to the mixing of some of the recently assembled albums, unless they used actual mixes that were made at the time of the recording. But if Hype Sticker says that it includes analog mastering, you bet it is. In terms of the sound quality, I honestly cannot uh, complain about how these reissues sound because they do indeed sound fantastic. Uh, they're full of punch and drive, but they also offer a lot of clarity. And it's kind of interesting because when it comes to the early albums such as Are You Experienced, Axis, and Electric Ladyland, they're very well produced albums in terms of what's going on with the instrumentation and the special effects used in the mixes such as phasing, flanger, and whatnot. Uh, but when it comes down to some of the recent posthumous releases alongside things like the Purple Box set, um, they offer a bit more of an intimate listening experience because the mixes that they use are not so, how dare I say it, overproduced. Um, it literally sounds as if you're sitting right in the studio with Jimmy and the experience and they're pumping out versions of all of these great songs in Jimmy's repertoire. So depending on which way you look at it, all the reissues sound fantastic. In terms of the mastering, like I mentioned earlier, the original albums were done by George Marino. The posthumous releases have been done by Bernie Grundman, Ray Janos, and Ryan K. Smith. And also what's rather interesting is that both Ray and Ryan did work alongside George Marino over at Sterling Sound. Uh, the records were pressed over at Quality Record Pressings, although I believe, according to what I see in the Dead Wax, the metalwork was done over at RTI. Now let's talk about the packaging. Uh, some of the releases come in these very nice heavy-duty tip-on style gatefold jackets, which make for absolute deluxe quality. Um, all aspects of the original artwork uh, for like the original albums come perfectly replicated. And uh, there's also booklets included with each of the releases. And these are kind of adapted from the CD booklets. Uh, they come with all kinds of old photos and liner notes along with handwritten bits from Jimmy himself. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that us record lovers, you know, just love to get with our releases. Absolute nice touch. And uh, all the records come housed in very nice MoFi-esque rice paper sleeves. And also, as you can tell, quality record pressings have their logo uh, on the uh, sleeves. So it's a dead giveaway in terms of where they were pressed. And also, what's kind of interesting, too, is that the first 5,000 copies are all numbered before um, regular pressings become non-numbered. So, for example, my copy of Both Sides of the Sky is copy number, as you can see, 3,836. Um, there's really no differences between the numbered versions and the non-numbered versions. It just adds a little bit more collectability to the numbered ones. 
Now let's talk about the big shocking factor, and that is the price. Um, these reissues are easily obtainable for anywhere from $15 to $20 or even less. Um, I've got my copies of Are You Experience and Axis Boat is Love for as low as $10. And it's amazing value for the money. And these uh, records are being marketed as being mastered from the tapes, packaged in nice jackets, with booklets, rice paper sleeves, and being sold for a rather low price. It gives companies like MoFi and Analog Productions a run for their money because they do the exact same thing that the Hendrix guys do, except for double or triple the price. It pleases the casual fan, the Hendrix diehard fans, someone who appreciates the sound of Analog, and those who are really caught on to the entire package as a whole, like myself. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not a diehard Hendrix fan, but I love buying Hendrix vinyl products because I'm getting great quality for a great price. So there you guys go. That is my review of the Jimi Hendrix vinyl reissues. What do you guys think of these reissues? Please drop a comment down below. I'd love to know. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the record spinning.